welcome back to Slide Bites. If you're not familiar with this channel, this is a budget guitar and gear review channel. All the equipment you see on this channel is my own. No one is providing me any equipment unless it's, you know, gifts from my family and friends, things like that. But yeah, it's just stuff I've collected over the last 17 ish, yeah, something like that, years of playing guitar. So anyway, uh, seeing as this is all my own gear and I've been thinking about prices and things like that and uh, acquiring more because I have an addiction to buying guitar stuff. Anyway, uh, <laughs> seeing as this is all my own stuff, something popped into my mind that I want to talk about because it's poignant. It's, it's poignant to this channel, it's poignant to me as a person and my own purchasing decisions. It's poignant probably to you and your own purchasing decisions. And it's something that the guitar community as a whole debates on a lot. I'm not going to throw anything, I'm not going to say anything negative one way or another or take a hard stance on anything like, you know, you should do this or do this or anything like that. I'm just going to present you some things to think about here. Let's talk about a relatively expensive import guitars like this beautiful Pro Mod Charvel SoCal style one. I just love this guitar. This is the best feeling, best sounding guitar I've ever played. Hands down, this is my, this, this thing is amazing. I mean, this is just, it, it is everything I could have ever wanted in a guitar. Let's talk about this guitar versus the Jackson JS22 DKA, another gorgeous guitar, made in China, $200 versus nine hundred dollars. This guitar, both guitars, I bought off of Sweetwater.com. Uh, this guitar I got for about eight hundred bucks. The Charvel I actually ended up getting for about eight hundred dollars because it was on a promotion. Uh, but it, the regular price is nine hundred dollars retail. Uh, this guitar is two hundred dollars. Do they look that much different? Do they look? Does this one look like a two hundred dollar guitar? Does this one look like a nine hundred dollar guitar? In my opinion, neither of them, I mean, they neither look cheap. This one definitely looks like a nice guitar. I think you look at it like, man, that thing looks nice. That rich red on there is just a gorgeous color, that candy apple red. Mm. Fender Classic. Both these guitars, I, 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 you know, this is a gorgeous guitar. Look at that arch top, the way it bounces the light. It's so comfortable to play, and it just it's just really a pretty good. Both are just gorgeous looking guitars. This does not look like a $200 guitar. This looks like a much more expensive guitar. And you can surprise people with price tag, we can tell. Uh, these guitars, I chose these two out of my collection because A, Jackson came out Charvel. Uh, so if you're not familiar with history, first there was Wayne Charvel, who I believe worked for Fender. He ended up starting his own shop. And then uh, Jackson got started working for Randy Rhodes out of Charvel. Uh, and then they ended up somehow splitting, becoming two different ones, and then Grover Jackson ended up owning both at some point, and then, yeah, uh, then Fender now owns them all. I, I, it's a little bit confusing for me, it's a rumor just off the top of my head. There's a familial connection between these two guitars already, and uh, now that it's since they're all on my Fender, which is awesome because I love Fender products anyway, uh, yeah, uh, just makes everything more related here. Yeah, so it's worth keeping everything in the same, you know, six string family. Uh, also, I should say the rig we're running was the Blackstar HD Club 40 Mark II uh, on the high gain channel with the Digitech Bad Monkey running as a boost just because I really wanted to play with some extra gain today. You have to use a boost uh, from the two screen, basically from a two overdrive. So I use a boost from an overdrive or a, from a compressor and I just really want the extra gain from the overdrive today. This is what we was in. So anyway, uh, let's talk about these guitars. Let's go ahead and give you the quick rundown on specs. Uh, and that's probably the best way to start this. This is an Alder body. The Charvel is an Alder body, two Seymour Duncan pickups, fixed bridge, three-way position, uh, a toggle. One volume, one tone, but the volume is coil split, and the tone is a no-load tone control. 22 jumbo nickel frets. Uh, this has an ebony fingerboard and a maple speed neck, a 12 to 16 inch compound radius, graphite reinforcement, tusk nut, uh, Charvel branded locking tuners. This guitar has a two point tremolo bridge that I have on it to be fixed, this Jackson. Uh, the one volume, one tone, three way toggle, two humbucking pickups. These are Jackson branded, not Seymour Duncan's like in the Charvel. This one has 24 jumbo frets, nickel, uh, just like this one has jumbo nickel frets. This one has 24 jumbo, jumbo nickel frets, this one has 22. Amaranth fretboard versus an ebony fretboard. 
Maple Speed Neck, Jackson, uh, uh, Jackson and Shervell both use the 12 to 16 compound radius, so they share that in between, and graphite reinforcement rods in both guitars. Very awesome. Uh, this is a poplar body, uh, and I'm not going to really say too much about tone woods because I'm kind of on the fence about all that, but yeah. This one does have binding, which is kind of nice on the neck. It has just a regular plastic nut and non-locking standard, uh, I guess, yeah, Jackson branded tuners. So all in all, not worlds apart, but differences. This one has two less frets than this one. This one has Seymour Duncan's. This one has Jackson branded. This one has a coil split. This one does not have a coil split. This one has locking, the Charvel has locking tuners. The Jackson does not have locking tuners. This one has a tough nut. This one does, this one has, the Jackson has a plastic nut. There's a lot of little differences there. It, I will just, I just want to start off by saying one thing off the bat. My Amazon shopping cart for this Jackson right now, I have locking tuners from Deodario. I have uh, 500k pots, one being split. I have a tusk nut, like what's on my Charvel, but this one is specifically cut for the Jacksons. And that is about $100 in mods. And I have the overall same vibe as with several of the features I get on this guitar. I still have two more frets on this one. I wouldn't be able to get, obviously the body woods are gonna be different no matter what I do, but I would have some of the spec. However, I still don't have, that, that's, that would bring the price of this guitar up to $300. And we have a lot of the same sort of capabilities at that point. But as it is, you don't have the coil split and everything or the tusk nut or any of that stuff stock. But for $100, I can make it have several of these features. So where is the big price difference coming from? Well, there's a few things I want to point out. So part of that price difference is something that is out of our individual control to an extent. Uh, it costs more to manufacture guitars in Mexico. So there's already a higher cost of labor in Mexico versus China. It is going to be part of it. Another part of it is this guitar went through probably a lot more QC than this guitar. This guitar, other than some rust on the, the uh, truss rod, which may not have even happen there, it could have happened in shipping or any other time in between, and it's tiny little neck pocket coil, uh, neck pocket finish crack that happened after my own stuff, so I can't, and it wasn't there for like two days after owning this guitar, so probably is my fault. Anyway, this guitar mostly came to me in immaculate condition. It has a hand rubbed oil finish on the neck and hand rolled fingerboard edges. This guitar plays like a dream. This guitar is also very fast. It does have rolled edges now, but that's because I rolled them with sandy block. It did have sharp frets. There's some little cosmetic issues. The neck isn't perfectly aligned in there. Like, it's off to this side just a little bit. Not a ton. Not enough to make enough of a difference or anything like that, but just, just a little bit. There's a lot more gap on this side of the, the neck pocket than there is over here. I can actually get a whole fingernail in over here, and I can't on this side of the neck, but I can tell. Yeah, no. Yeah, I can. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't really get my fingernail very much in there, but on this side, it's it, there's a much wider gap. So it is what it is. Not a huge deal. It doesn't affect the guitar's playability. It could if it was worse, but it doesn't. So there's obviously a little bit more time spent on each guitar coming out of the Mexican Charvel plant than there is coming out of the Chinese Jackson plant. That's not to say that this guitar isn't a good guitar. It's just they're manufacturing so many, and they're they're manufactured to be at a lower cost. And using components that cost less, this is a poplar body and an amaranth fretboard. This is a alder body with an ebony fretboard. Ebony can be fairly expensive, but alder is not terribly expensive. But both both are worth more than poplar and, and amaranth, to my knowledge. Uh, so yeah, that that's part of it. You got more time spent on each guitar, and you have a little bit higher quality components, probably higher quality pots. And I mean, the pickups are Seymour Duncan pickups, all Seymour Duncan, and correct me if I'm wrong, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, because I could, could completely be wrong on this. But to my knowledge, all Seymour Duncan pickups are made in the USA. These pickups are the distortion set, uh, the Seymour Duncan distortion humbuckers. These pickups together, to buy as a complete set, cost all, right around $200 for just the pickups. That is the entire cost of this whole guitar in the Charvel's Seymour Duncan pickups. That is a huge chunk of the difference right there. So we've already added up the cost of manufacturing. For a hundred bucks, you could probably get this to have you know, the locking tuners and the tusk nut 
and the coil split and all that and 500k pots on the Jackson you could do that if you spent the extra hundred bucks and you have some of the same capability but you're not going to have that same cost of labor you're not going to have someone who sat down and actually hand rubbed the oil finish on here it's still a very fast neck 16 compound radii on both necks is just phenomenal phenomenal I, I absolutely love it uh, and these jumbo nickel frets are very nice on both the guitars. I don't have any complaints there. But someone really took their time to roll these edges and to rub the oil finish in this guitar's neck. And that didn't happen here. And so they, this guitar has a lot more little cosmetic ones, just this one doesn't. These pickups and the overall components of the guitar are just more expensive. This one, it does not have as expensive pickups. These are Jackson branded pickups. So both pickup sets are ceramic humbuckers. So you wouldn't think that'd be that much of a difference. Now, mind you, the tuning on the Jackson right now is in double drop C, and the tuning on the Charvel is in double drop B, but that's not really the point. We're listening more for the quality of the overall tone of these guitars uh, rather than anything else. Uh, so yeah, that's something I, 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 so if I got the same pickups that are in the Charvel and put them in this, this guitar would then, if you add those other mods, $500. We're still $400 off the mark of the Charvel. But I think a lot of it does come down to overall material cost and the cost of labor being higher. But with that, you do get some, uh, you get more time spent on each guitar and you do get, uh, you know, I mean, I, it, it's one of those things, the whole law of diminishing returns. There comes a point where you're spending so much on the guitar, how much more of a guitar are you really getting? Is this guitar at $900 worth Four and a half times more than this two hundred dollar guitar. I'm not going to give you a, a straight answer on that one myself because I've got mixed feelings myself on the issue. I think there's things you cannot replicate if you're trying to manufacture a large amount of guitars in a eastern plant without you know all the same level of quality control and without the same level of components going into it. There's only so much you can do and Jackson's done a great job of what they're doing to manufacture a large quantity of guitars to get them in more people's hands at a lower price so it's available to more people. This guitar is that next step. You love this, you really like playing this, you can either mod it and bring it to be similar to this or you can just go out and buy this. I see both arguments very easily. I have no issue with with going either route on that. I see where people are coming from. This is a 100% usable guitar. The pickups, as they are, they may not be as aggressive, and we will play again before the end of this video. We will play out so you can hear some more differences and just listen for a few, and we'll do it with the distortion, and we'll do a little bit of cleaning here so you can hear those differences when we play out. But I just want to say right now, this guitar has the bones to be a very amazing guitar with even if you just did the $100 mods, the the pick, the tone pot, uh, the the pots, you changed the pots to 500k or whatever. I haven't even checked to see whether they're in them, but I've got some nice ones in my Amazon cart. Uh, and you put on locking tuners and a tusk nut. Right, that right there will make this guitar so stable in tuning. It's already pretty stable now. I fixed the bridge, which these two point trims on these, these lower ones, I. You might see it as a feature to have that. I think it's kind of a detriment to these lower price guitars, personally. But, you know, each, each their own. But this guitar would be so much more stable with those upgrades. As far as playability is concerned, I, I think it would be a worthy guitar. I, I think it's a worthy guitar now, but I think it would be even closer to this with just about $100 more of components. And that's something that you can easily do yourself. Now that's overly complicated things, or just take it to a tech with those parts and say, hey, can you do this for me? So yeah, there's something to think about. Overall, as far as being that much more expensive, I get it, I do get it. But this guitar being this much more expensive, the, this Charvel being four and a half times the cost of this Jackson, you put $100 of modifications in this Jackson and you will, you will have brought it up to a similar level of the Charvel, but you still will have those small cosmetic blemishes. You still won't have the hand rubbed oil finish. You won't have those, well, yeah, I do now. You, you have to do the work to make this thing play like, the, to make this Jackson be this Charvel. You have to put that work into it. And it's still not gonna have the same body woods and the same, you know, fretboard wood and all that. I, Tonewood to me is a mixed bag. I'm not gonna really get into it, but personal opinion, it's not, I think a guitar is the 
the sound you get from your guitar is a massive amount of everything combined with your amp and everything else. And I think your amp's probably a big, bigger chunk of it than your tone would, but that's, I, I'm not, I don't want to say it doesn't have any effect, but I'm also not convinced on the amount of effect, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Let's leave it at that. Overall, you can't change those things about this guitar, but do they need to be changed? And realistically, with this guitar, with a small amount of mods, play most shows and no one would know the difference. Yeah, it looks the part. It looks good enough. And from a distance, no one's going to notice the tiny little cosmetic things on it that I've pointed out. And with, it already plays great. It doesn't play quite as good as this, but you do the work and you're about there. So all I'm saying is I get why this guitar is more expensive. I get why this guitar is less expensive. I understand 100% people who say, let's just, instead of putting in all that work to get to modify a lower price guitar to be like this guitar, I'm just gonna go out and buy this guitar. I get it 100%. If you don't want to spend that much on it, you know, put put $100 worth of upgrades on this one, and you have something similar to Promont, and then you put in a $200 worth of pay, whatever your favorite pickups, so $200 uh, rough, uh, roughly this uh, the cost of a lot of different good pickup sets. You put those in this guitar. You're at five hundred dollars, and you have a guitar, and that is literally, you know, you're getting close to this, and this is still more expensive. So if you jack this price up to three hundred bucks of your own mod, roughly, you're still coming close to this, and this is still more expensive. And I do understand why, but is that amount of difference worth it to you? The difference is, do you want to put the work into this Jackson to make it? For example, this we'll just use this jacket. You want to put this the work into a lower priced guitar to make it play like the more expensive one, to make it feel like the more expensive one, or do you want to just grab the more expensive one, know it's been put through everything it needed to be put through and tested through, and just go with this, and then know right off the bat, and not have to do any more work. It's really down to you and what you personally are going to want to deal with. I see both sides. I 100% do. I hope that was. Uh, I hope this was helpful for somebody out there. We're gonna go ahead and play out. Uh, but for anyone who is on the fence about, you know, whether they should buy something like this and whether it's worth upgrading, yeah, it potentially is. And even it, I just want to say, Jackson doesn't have subsidiary. They don't have a different name on their headstock. Jackson is Jackson at all price points. Charvel was Charvel at all price points. At least as of right now. Uh, at this current time, 2024, both guitars have just put their names on their headstocks. There's no off-brand. You're still getting a Jackson. You're still getting Charvel. And you're getting, either way you go, you're already getting a great guitar. And yeah, there's no shame either way. I would never shame you for whatever guitar you buy. But just know, don't feel bad for having the $200 Jackson versus this guitar. Because this guitar is not really that far from this one. But there are reasons this one does cost more. It's just, are those reasons worth that to you? And that is the overall overarching thing of this video. Guys, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the way I play, if you like the content, you might consider liking and subscribing uh, if I, you feel like I've earned it because it does go a long way to helping this little guitar channel grow. And I'm trying to get a guitar community going here that helps each other find good deals and, you know, um, has a lot it shares knowledge with each other that's all this is about it's about building the guitar community up and making it stronger growing it um, if you like the music i play and you you're interested in or like the background music or anything like that and you're interested you might follow me over on tiktok and instagram uh, where i post written guitar music that i have uh, written and recorded using a looper and things like that here in my own little office uh yeah uh other than that, I don't really have anything else for you guys, but thank you to all my viewers and all my returning viewers and all my subscribers. I appreciate you guys so much, all of you so much. Um, more content is always in the works. Keep sharing partners. All right, so we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time here, but I'm just gonna play uh, a little bit. I'm gonna just flip through the pickup positions. We're on the Black Stars Clean channel with the Digitech Bad Monkey still engaged, the Overdrive still engaged. So we're just gonna play uh, on the Clean channel with the pickups for real quick, uh, for a moment, and then we're going to 
uh, switch over to the high gain channel. We'll still have some bad monkey engaged, and we'll just we'll just do that on both the cars, and we'll just let you hear the differences and see what you think, how much of a difference you even hear at all between these, you know, this relatively inexpensive two hundred dollar Jackson versus that nine hundred dollar Charvel. Let's go ahead and let's, let's just play for a minute. <laughs>